On June the 21st, 2025, the day of the summer solstice, many of all you subscribers from around the world stood outside, stuck a stick in the ground and measured its shadow. And you did that to help measure the shape of the earth and prove that it can't be flat. This was the biggest crowdsourced science experiment I've ever done. And today, we reveal the results. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. So back in June, I asked as many of you as possible uh, to take part in an experiment. I want to recreate one of the oldest experiments ever. No fancy tech, just a stick, a measuring tape and your location. And I want us all to do it together. This is going to be a global experiment on the same day. I asked you to measure two simple things, the length of a vertical stick and the length of the shadow it casts at solar noon. Solar noon, remember, is the point where the sun is the highest in the sky for your location. And this was important because it effectively removed longitude from the equation. All we needed was your latitude and the solar angle to see what was going on. Using just that stick length and the shadow length it cast, I could then calculate the solar elevation angle using trigonometry. And that's what Eratosthenes did over 2000 years ago to estimate the size of the Earth. And we just did it too with over a thousand people. The exact number was 1014 separate results over 43 different countries. And some people went to insane effort with this. I had emails from people in remote parts of Alaska and Chile, and even a Girl Scout group taking part as well. It was amazing to see. And I want to start by saying thank you to all of you that took part. The attention to detail and the precision by which you measured was genuinely a joy to see. For me, it taught me that backyard science experiments are still alive and well, and you should all give yourself a big pat on the back. So let's first off talk about what we would expect to see on the globe Earth with this experiment. Now during the summer solstice, the sun is directly overhead the Tropic of Cancer. That's at 23.4 degrees north. This means that as you move away from that line, north or south, the solar elevation angle, so how high the sun is in the sky, decreases in a predictable linear way. In fact, the formula for it is pretty simple. The solar elevation angle should be 90 minus brackets, latitude minus 23.4 brackets. So if you're at 43.4 degrees north, for example, the sun should be 70 degrees above the horizon. At the equator, 66.6 degrees high. We should see a nice, neat, clean, straight line when we plot latitude against solar elevation angle because of that linear change. So this here is a graph of latitude versus solar elevation angle for everything south of 23.4 degrees north. The results you see on the left there are places like Australia and Chile and South Africa and New Zealand. And the results in the top right are places like Malaysia and Thailand and Southeast Asia and places like that. Now here is the graph of latitude versus solar elevation angle for everything north of 23.4 degrees north. These are primarily all the results from the US and Europe. And here they are together. As you can see, despite the incredible amount of results in this graph, you can see the trend line shows a perfect linear relationship, exactly what we would expect on a globe. Every single submission helps paint a picture. The sun appears lower in the sky the further you are from 23.4 degrees north during the summer solstice. Now let's look at what the flat earth model predicts for latitude against solar elevation angle. Well, if the sun is always above the flat disk and never goes below the horizon physically, then shadows at solar noon should vary only because of the distance to the sun, not the curvature of Earth. That means the further you are from the sun, the lower it appears in the sky, and the shadow lengths again should increase the further you get away from the sun. But crucially, the relationship between solar elevation angle and latitude on a flat Earth becomes non-linear 
and asymmetric, especially as you move further away from the sun's central point. So if you plot latitude versus solar angle on a flat earth, the curve bends the wrong way. It's not symmetric, it flattens out at higher latitudes and the predicted angles stop matching reality. The graph I showed earlier with the results from the experiment supports what we see on the globe, not a flat one. But we aren't going to stop there. Let's look at shadow lengths too, because they don't behave linearly. They change according to the tangent of the solar elevation angle. And that curve is very specific for a globe Earth. Now obviously, people that took part all used different stick lengths. So to make all the measurements comparable, we needed to normalize the stick and shadow length. Some of you use rulers or broom handles or even tent poles. And that's fine, of course, but we can't compare a three meter shadow from a one meter stick with a three meter shadow from a two meter stick. That would be meaningless. So I adjusted every shadow measurement as if every single one of your sticks was exactly one meter tall. Now that gives us a standardized length of what the shadow would be if the stick was one meter long, which makes comparing across thousands of submissions fair. Now, when we do this, the graph it gives us is fascinating. The relationship between the sun's angle in the sky and the shadow it casts is not linear. It's based on the tangent function from trigonometry. When the sun is nearly overhead, the tangent of the angle is large. So of course the shadows are short, but as the sun drops lower in the sky, especially below 30 degrees latitude, the tangent changes dramatically. That makes shadow grow faster and faster the lower the sun gets. This should create a smooth but steepening line on a graph, not a straight line. And that's exactly what we see. How beautiful is that? Over 1,000 results of recording the shadow from a stick and we have proved a curved surface to earth. If the earth were flat and the sun was hovering above a flat surface at a fixed height, shadow lengths should increase at a very steady linear rate. As you move away from the sun, you would expect a straight line on this graph. But that's not what we saw. The real data curves dramatically. And that curve perfectly matches the behavior of sunlight on a curved surface. But we're not gonna stop there either. Now I took a few of these submissions, three to be precise, all on roughly the same longitude, and I used those to approximate the circumference of the Earth. So I picked these three locations. Location one was in Finland, that had a solar elevation angle of 52.95 degrees. Location two was in Poland, that had a solar elevation angle of 63.30 degrees. And location three was Greece, with a solar elevation angle of 75 Point one two degrees. Between all three locations, the difference in solar elevation angle was 22.17 degrees. And these three locations are all within half a degree of longitude. Location one and three almost bang on, and location two just under half a degree off. So by adding the distances between these locations, 1,101.06 kilometers and 1,461.35 kilometers, we get a total distance between location one and three of 2,562.41 kilometers. Now, using Eratosthenes method, we can scale that up. That 22.17 degrees is the equivalent to the 2,562.41 kilometers. Therefore, one degree is, is 115.58 kilometers. Multiply that by 360, and we get an estimated globe circumference of 41,608 0.82 kilometers. The real value is 40,075 kilometers, so that's within just 4%. An astonishing result for a stick and shadow experiment run by the public, but we can go further. I also ran the numbers using each segment individually, from location one to two, with a solar angle elevation change of 10.45 degrees, we can estimate the Earth's circumference to be 37,931.25 kilometers. With location two to three, an 11.72 degree change in solar elevation angle, we can work out Earth's circumference to be 44,887.88 kilometers. If we average the two, we get a total globe circumference of 41,409.57 kilometers. That is within 3% of the actual true value. You did that 
with sticks and shadows. So what did we prove after all this? We showed that the solar elevation angle behaves exactly as it should on a globe. We saw the shadow length follow a curved pattern, not a straight line. And we used that data to estimate the size of our planet. And we did it all without launching a satellite or trusting any government agencies. This might be the largest community science experiment ever done to measure the curve of Earth. And yes, I've applied to Guinness World Records to find out. To everyone who took part, Thank you. You helped prove that the world is wonderfully, predictably and mathematically spherical. Well, there we go. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. And once again, thank you to all of you for your contribution. Thanks so much for watching. It is as ever appreciated. If you enjoyed this particular one, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe as well if you haven't yet. And share it as well as far and wide as you can to show we prove the curve of the Earth. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for a brand new Flat Earther. See you then. <laughs>